A UK traveler says Indonesian Muslim women are happier than Western women. And this is totally in contrast on what the media says, right? Oh, the Muslim women, she's oppressed, she's unhappy. That's what they always say in the media, but this UK traveler says otherwise. Let's have a look at his story. Meet Bradley, a traveler from England. After an eye-opening trip to Indonesia, he found himself seeing Islam in a whole new light. Especially noticing how Muslim women seemed freer and happier than women in the West. This is very, very controversial. Yeah. I don't think people are going to like me saying this, especially in the UK. Something I really love is the religion. It has completely destroyed my perception of Islam. What we hear about Islam is places like Afghanistan and Iraq. It's all we hear about. And when we think of Southeast media, Asia, right? we don't think of Islam. We think of Vietnam and Buddhism and all these kinds. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of people, they don't even know that the country with the most uh, Muslims is Indonesia. If you look at like the population amount of Muslims that live there, Indonesia is number one. Most Muslims in this world live in Indonesia. It's really true, guys. It's crazy. You can look this up online. And yeah, about the media. The media always shows Islam as dark, gray, gloomish, and, and like like it calls for, for war and this and that. But that is not true because if you go to a Muslim country like Indonesia, you actually see that Islam is not like that. Alhamdulillah. Kind of things. Bradley is a British traveler who has been visiting Indonesia since June. After traveling and experiencing life in Indonesia, he has shared his controversial take after experiencing Indonesia's culture, comparing it to his home country, the United Kingdom. Yeah. His content on Bradley's show is about travel and cultural critique providing his audience with an outsider's view of life in Indonesia. In this particular video, Bradley makes a bold claim. Which Indonesia, in many ways, surpasses the United Kingdom. This statement alone would be enough to stir controversy. But Bradley goes further by providing detailed reasons. He revealed why he thought Indonesia was better than the United Kingdom and had People points to back it up. Firstly, he started with street food oh, both true. countries have very different concepts of street food in the united kingdom street food is just a marketing gimmick and soulless that just make it a money making venture yeah, and when you friendly, make street food right? about money and not quality so in my life i've only been once to asia and this was taiwan and as a muslim you can imagine that my food options are limited right because i can't eat like haram food but guess what and that's actually funny when i looked at like the fish side seafood side even the the vegetarian side of foods that is offered on street markets or or the the, the sweet stuff right like like I don't know, like bubble tea, for example, where they offer something like ice cream, pancakes, all that. I had more food options as a Muslim in Taiwan, where a lot of stuff I can't eat, than I have in uh, here in Germany, for example. Like, <laughs> and both are non-Muslim countries, okay? So I'm comparing now street food from, from two non-Muslim countries. So how would it be if I went, for example, to Indonesia? I can eat like almost everything there, right? But even in this comparison, Taiwan has stronger food options and more options even for vegetarians or Muslims that only eat halal than uh, Germany does. And guess what? And this is funny. There are less Muslims living in Taiwan than in Germany. And I have, as a Muslim, even in Taiwan, better food options with less Muslims there than in Germany. This, this makes you think, right? Like, it's, it's horrible. And if, if you buy food, like, ex there are a few exceptions. I'm not saying, like, every shop or, or place where you can get food or street food is, like, unfriendly. But on average, they are not so friendly here. They are like, what do you want? Uh, five euros? Buy. Something like that, right? But if you go to, like, in Asia somewhere, street food, people smile at you. They sometimes ask you, how is your day? How are you doing, sir? This and that. They don't ask this here in Germany. But when I go to Taiwan, they ask me a lot of stuff. They smile at me. They are nice. This is so different. In taste. Subhanallah. The people will not come back for food. They know thought and care is not being put in. In fact, many Asians who have lived in Asia all their lives and are used to street food have questioned the United Kingdom's lack of street food. Yeah, Germany is the Asia, same. It's similar. Street yeah. food is a big part of culture. And Indonesia... Street food is very culturally significant yeah. and has been a part of it's people's fun. lives for decades. 
Many street vendors often inherit recipes from their ancestors, while others create recipes based on modern tastes. It has such a big presence in Indonesia that it is considered one of the countries with the best street food in the world. Indonesia was also featured on a Netflix documentary called Street Food Asia wow. that allowed the world to get a glimpse of what Indonesian street food is I like. I need to travel to Indonesia for the last one day, reason, inshallah. He saved the best for last, taking up the majority of the TikTok to explain. As soon as I arrived here, very apparent to me that women are happy, everybody's free, yeah. everybody's kind, but it's it's also the structure that the Islam kind of brings to the society. Yeah. Here. Now, being woken up every morning at 4 or 5 a.m. by the call to prayer is another thing that is difficult for me. Um, but in comparison to the UK, we don't really have religion. And many people, yeah, we have many Muslims, we have decreasing. many Christians, we have many this, but nobody really goes to church and nobody's really that kind of invested in their religion. True. It's unique to see. And I do find it very interesting. Yeah. I hope that's not too controversial. To the West. Uh, that's true. We have like empty churches here in Germany. If you if you walk to a church or next to a church on a Sunday, you will see that it's not really crowded. Like Juma prayer has more crowd and more people here at the mosques, even though the Muslim population is lower than the Christian population in Germany. But we can get mosques crowded on Juma, but we can't get churches really crowded on Sunday. Unless like there's some exceptions when if there's like, let's say a funeral or something, right? Or someone's maybe getting married, right? So then the church can be full. But like Sundays, forget it. Like they are half empty, the, the churches. But you do find some mosques, especially in bigger cities, that are actually totally crowded. So that is so true. And with the decrease of religion comes also the decrease of morals and values. And we see this a lot in the West. We also... Uh, hear more and more people saying, oh, the white race will die out because there are not enough children and stuff. I mean, what do you expect? Like in Islam, the, like some people are actually saying the women is oppressed because there are roads in Islam, right? There's a difference between a man and a woman. They are in deeds, of course, and, and reward. They can be the same in front of Allah, depending on what they did in this dunya, right? So when a woman does a good deed, she gets a reward. If a man does a good deed, he gets a reward. If a woman does her prayers, if a man does does, does the prayers they get the reward and, and there's justice right but when it comes to roads we have to look at also the biology who has the muscles who is stronger and can carry more heavy stuff why is there for example boxing a separation between men and women why not women and, and men boxing against each other because physically men are taller and they have more muscles right so, of course, there's a difference and that's why we have certain roads and even in the Quran, it says that we men are the maintainers and protectors of women. It doesn't say the women has less value than us or something. It doesn't say that. It just says we have a, a more protective role, you could say, a provision role, right? And I feel like a lot of... Um, media outlets are using this and they're actually changing this uh, and turning it into a women cannot do this a women cannot do that but that's not true we have roads in islam this doesn't mean that uh, one person is above another or something in front of allah that's not true any it's muslim a lot of misunderstanding. countries are ones in the middle east and war affected countries like afghanistan to southeast asia was perceived as the countries practicing buddhism and entirely different from Muslims. What surprised him was how everyone was happy in Indonesia, in a world that thinks that all Muslim women and unhappy, seeing women in their hijabs and looking happy was a stereotype it's shattering beautiful. moment. What moved him more was how invested Indonesian people are in their religion and spirituality. Bradley mentioned yeah. that in the United Kingdom, he noticed that although it was made up of a lot of religions and cultures, it's not, not many were as invested in the religion. But yeah. in Indonesia, he saw a it was sense different of hundred years ago. and community when it came to religion, especially Islam. Unlike the UK, where religious practice can be more private and less visible, Indonesia's Muslim community is openly and yeah. actively engaged in their faith. They pray Although publicly, he revealed the call it to has prayer. been difficult for him to be awoken to the call to prayer for Fajr, he has grown to admire it as it is something he has not seen in the United Kingdom. It was unique and interesting to witness Allah as Allah. that definitely changed his perception of Muslims and Islam in general. Ever since, 
he has landed in Indonesia. He fell in love he has with the country. He's been making Indonesian content from trying their coffees to their famous Masha food. Allah. He has also been making review videos and documenting his experience for his followers to see and enjoy. In his comparison TikTok, many supported his viewpoints and shared their own experiences from religion to life in Indonesia. Many Indonesians thanked Bradley and also showed him appreciation for his kind words about Indonesia. He's a nice may Allah guy. guide him towards Islam. I mean, yeah, may Allah guide Bradley to Islam. I mean, like this guy, he seems sincere and he's open hearted. Like I love people like him that actually want to make their own picture. Like we have like a lot of people these days and it's sad. They look at something or they hear something and they don't check it out themselves and they c take someone else's opinion and take it as their own opinion without actually doing some own research or having a look with your own eyes at something, right? And this is like why so many people are Islamophobes these days because they're being controlled and brainwashed by the media and they're not trying to travel to a Muslim country to see if that is really true or to befriend Muslims or enter a mosque to just see. You know what, like I invite everyone, like right now, if, if you are a non-Muslim and you have any negative thoughts on Islam, I invite you all to check out a mosque and look at the Muslims there and what they are doing, speak to some of them, or if you can financially to travel to a Muslim country like Indonesia or go to Morocco, for example, Morocco is really, really nice or Egypt or somewhere, right? Like I highly recommend this, do this, check this out and you will see Islam is not like the media is showing. This is not true. Like, and of course we Muslims are happy because we, we know the reason why we are on this planet. Even the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the only reason why we and the jinn were created was to worship Allah. So our purpose is the connection to our creator, our worship, our ibadah. If we don't have that, we feel empty and we're not happy. This is true. And it even says in the Quran that surely in the remem remembrance of Allah, the hearts find peace. So this is very important to have a spirituality in life. Otherwise, you're not going to be really happy. Money will not make you happy. The only happiness comes from the connection to your creator. So I also highly recommend you guys to read the Quran. You don't have to have the mind state where you're saying, oh, I'm reading it to accept Islam. No, you don't need to have this sort of feeling at first. Just do it to research and find out what Islam really is, to understand your Muslim colleagues, your friends or Muslims in general better, right? And at the end of the day, after you read it, you can decide yourself if this is the truth or not. So yeah, that's my, my advice to you out there. And yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time, inshallah.